Before this video starts, I'd like to say that this video is sponsored by Mischief. Mischief is a brand that creates and releases insane new things every two weeks. You've probably seen some of their drops before, but didn't even know that they were the ones behind it. I've seen their next drop that's coming up and it is sick. And the only way to know about it is by downloading the Mischief app. So if you want to be in the know, search M-S-C-H-F on the App Store or Google Play Store or go to mischief.com. Anyways, here's the video. What's up, Greg? And welcome back to another episode of Ditsy Gaki, the internet's most notorious ripoff of Diggy Gorgonzola. So it has been brought to my attention that the movie that I made a video about a couple weeks ago, What's Up, is actually a sequel. I did not realize this. There were a lot of things that I was confused about in that movie, and apparently it's because that movie is a sequel to a different movie called Big and Little Monsters, which is actually a ripoff of Monsters vs. Aliens. I gotta be honest, it's kind of clever of them to just use the same characters to rip off a different movie. That's pretty genius. Like, they didn't have to, like, remodel any new characters or make a new set or anything like that. They can just stick all of these characters in a different movie. So today we're gonna be taking a look at Big and Little Monsters, and we're gonna see if it's any less bad than What's Up, uh, and we're also gonna see if it's any less racist. Also, I'm curious to see if any of the questions that I had about what's up are answered in this movie because this movie is supposed to set up what's up. All right, let's dive in. I'm about to dive in. So the movie starts with Dr. Crumb being woken up. He's got a very technologically advanced room, but what else would you expect? from Dr. Crumb. He's got all these little gadgets designed to wake him up and give him a good morning. He's got this little floating robot that comes to give him the news. Express breakfast, country breakfast, breakfast with nuts, Sunday breakfast, breakfast delight. Huh. Interesting. What a weird ass menu. This thing is not intuitive at all. Yeah, that's right. We're getting real nitpicky right off the bat. This menu, it, it doesn't make any sense. Like why not just write the names of all the breakfast items? Why do they have to have pictures of the sun that are supposed to somehow tell you what you're getting for breakfast? I mean, these icons barely even tell you what each breakfast is. Like the first one, this is supposed to be express breakfast, but it's just a picture of the sun. And I guess he's like going fast. He's just a fast sun. So I guess maybe you could infer that that's supposed to mean express breakfast, but that still doesn't tell you what express breakfast is. Like what is in the meal? It's just a fast sun. Also, what the heck is breakfast delight? The last one. Breakfast delight. I think I can picture kind of what each each one of these would be, except for breakfast delight. And the picture doesn't help at all because it's just a picture of a clown. It's just a regular meal like any other one of these meals, but like a clown serves it. Just a clown bringing you out a regular ass omelet. Hmm. You selected country breakfast. Good morning, Dr. Crumb. Yesterday's electronic news headlines. Tomorrow, Dr. Crumb will launch the first intergalactic supersonic geometric antenna. Right off the bat, the movie's not any less racist, specifically towards Chinese people. What is with the, the writers of these movies and being really racist? In the last movie, they had the guy that they kept making fun of, and now in this one, the robot is making fun of Chinese people? For crying out loud, it must be a virus. I'm sure I unsubscribed from that darn Chinese news channel. Oh, your robot got a virus? The robot that you made and only you own got a virus? Who wrote the virus for your robot that no one else knows exists? I think you programmed it to do that just so you could be racist. It kind of seems like it. Country breakfast will be ready in. Oh, here we go. Now we get to see what the country breakfast is. Look at all those pots and pans in the background that were used to make this breakfast. I bet it's gonna be a pretty exquisite breakfast. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Country breakfast complete. It's an egg, it's one egg. The country breakfast is just one egg and coffee, but like in the in a cup the size of a shot glass, just a little, tiny little thimble full of coffee. That's all Dr. Crumb needs to get himself going in the morning. Is this a thing? Is there such a thing as a country breakfast that's just one egg, one hard boiled egg? Ah, reminds me of life out on the farm. It was a simpler life to be sure. Every morning I would get fed one hard boiled egg by my floating racist robot and I would drink coffee out of a cup the size of a water bottle cap. I miss those days. That was a simpler time. More salt! More salt. A little more salt, please. A little more salt. Apply! Junk. Yeah. Good morning, Amanda. 
Oh, this junky concentrated salt laser still isn't working right. It needs to be fixed right away. Who can eat breakfast like this? So one thing I noticed right at the beginning of this movie is that Dr. Crumb seems a little bit different. He seems a little more cranky and jaded, especially towards technology. Like right here, he gets pretty pissed about his salt laser not working. I don't know why he needs a laser to put salt on his egg. I feel like a salt shaker would be just as convenient, if not more, because you don't have to like change the batteries or invent it. So over breakfast, Amanda, Dr. Crum, and Gunto are all talking about their big day today because this like intergalactic antenna that Dr. Crum and Dr. Zooks have been working on for a really long time is about to be operational. This antenna is apparently supposed to help them contact extraterrestrials, get messages from aliens, all that good shit. So they're all really, really excited. Oh boy, the antenna, we're officially late. We've got to get out of here. Guto, what on earth are you doing? Guto, give me that. I have no idea what you're doing, but this isn't one of your silly toys, you hear me? So in addition to being pretty cranky in this movie, Dr. Crumb also hates Gunto. I don't know what happened between this movie and the next one that made him like Gunto, but in this movie, he fucking hates his own nephew. It's really weird. Which was pretty shocking and devastating to me, because I happen to be a pretty big Gunto stan. In a few moments, we'll be able to communicate with any intelligent being in the vastness of outer space. Dr. Crumb, please, Dr. Zooks, just one more question. What about our security? We're still pretty traumatized by the images of that film showing how you fought off those terrible aliens during the infamous invasion of 54. One thing that they keep bringing up at the beginning that's gonna be important later is this alien invasion of 1954. So apparently there was this alien invasion back in the 50s that Dr. Crumb and Dr. Zoops helped stop. They got rid of all the aliens, fought them all, sent them back to space. Not really clear what they did, but that's the reason that they're such famous scientists now is because of that alien invasion back in the 50s. Remember that for later, just tuck it back into the depths of your mind. You're gonna need it. You're gonna need to know about it later. If you will allow me, I'd like to ask a very special young lady to help me turn on the antenna. My niece, Amanda. Can I go with you, please? No, you stay here. You're too immature to handle a machine like this. You see this? Even Amanda's getting in on the Gunto hating action. Put some respect on Gunto's name, man. Disrespectful. <laughs> Wow, yeah, looks like it really took a lot of maturity to turn that machine on. Way to go, Amanda, you're so smart and mature. If only Gunto could have flipped that switch. Why they gotta do my boy Gunto like this? After this press conference, Gunto's walking around all sad because nobody let him turn on the machine. And while he's walking around, this meteorite comes from outer space and crashes like right at his feet. Just a quick side note, I feel like if something of that size really came that fast and crashed into Earth, it would probably have killed Gunto. I'm glad it didn't. I'm just saying like physics wise, I'm pretty sure it would have rocked his shit. If there's any scientists watching this and want to confirm that, let me know. But it was literally burning up on its way to Earth. So I'm pretty sure that Gunto should be dead. Wow, this is so beautiful. Oh yeah, shit. Look at that green ball. So beautiful. Oh, green ball flat green ball that is somehow not affected by light. There's no shading on this ball. It's so beautiful. Uncle, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Is it possible for the antenna to receive alien messages through a baseball? <laughs> no, no, Guto. You already saw. So you might have thought that the animation in What's Up was bad, but get ready because it seems like there are a lot of issues that they had worked out in What's Up that they were still having in this movie. For example, in this movie, there's a lot of scenes where certain characters' hair and clothes will just start vibrating for no reason. Like in this scene, Dr. Crumb's hair is just going brrrr. Why is it doing that? What's up with that? You know, maybe it's because he's so goddamn smart. Ever think of that? His brain is doing fucking front flips in his head. He's so smart that his brain just gets bored sometimes with regular life and it's just gotta do extreme sports in his head and it's making his hair go It's time to go to sleep. Still plenty of awkward pauses in this movie though. There was no effort to change that. I mean, I guess this movie came before that. So it makes sense that there would still be so many awkward pauses. Starting to think that this was more of an artistic choice than a mistake. That moment when you're putting your brother to sleep and you've already tucked him in. 
time for bed. New message. It's a message! It's a, it's a message. message! Oh shit! The intergalactic antenna is getting a message. Our boys Dr. Zooks and Dr. Crum are over the moon. They're getting their first message from aliens, so let's check it out and see what it says. Salt, sugar, mutation, danger, salty junk food, hurry, salt, repeat, no sugar! Is there a defect? What a strange message! I can't stand machines! I hate them! What a bunch of hunks of junk! If only one of them would work right- Yo, holy shit, dude, calm down! So mad immediately about a machine not working. What a bunch of hunks of junk! One that you built, by the way. So if it's not working, it's probably your fault, right? Because you didn't build it right? I gotta be honest, guys. Dr. Crumb, he's different in this movie. Dr. Crumb hits different in this movie, dude. He's a little bit wild. He's kind of off his rocker. He's a cranky little man. Imagine getting your first message from outer space space, you get a message from aliens on an antenna that you built and it doesn't make sense at first and your first reaction is just like WHAT THE FUCK I HATE SCIENCE! I HATE MACHINES! FUCK TECHNOLOGY! I HATE ELECTRICITY! I'm going to go live in the woods! I'm gonna live with the squirrels forever! I swear dude, Dr. Crumb is like one tiny little glitch away from going Amish. He's gonna go full Amish. And what do we have here? It's a piece of the baseball I saw hit the antenna. That's what I was trying to ask you about at dinner. Remember? I thought it could be a message from space. Uh-oh, it looks like whatever was in that green ball, you remember the sexy, sexy hot green ball from earlier? Whatever was in it, it looks like it escaped because it's in pieces on the floor. What do you mean it hit the antenna? But when? Yeah, look at that. Look at her hair. It's doing that thing that Dr. Crumb's hair was doing. Just, what's going on there? She looks like she's gonna fly away. What was that? A weird sound? I gotta go! Oh my goodness, that can't be what I think it is. We have to tell Uncle Crumb. Tell me what? What was that noise? Hmm. This seems weird because they're looking at whatever is outside. It's whatever came out of the green ball. They're like watching it and saying shit about it, but they're not showing it. Which I guess could be like an artistic choice. Some movies do that where they're like, oh my God, look at that. And then it cuts to the next scene and you're like left in suspense. But because this movie is so lazily animated, all I can think is that they just did this to get out of animating the monster for one scene. They really got too lazy to animate like the main antagonist of the movie. He's destroying everything. Aren't those the same aliens you fought and defeated in 54? It's time for you to save the world again! Uh, sometimes Amanda moves like she's a character in a horror movie. Like she's the girl from The Grudge or The Ring or something. It's like she like speeds up and slows down at weird speeds and her hair is going pop 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 pop. It's time for you to save the world again! I'm worried about Amanda in this movie, dude. First her vibrating hair and now she's moving like some kind of ghostly apparition. Can't say I like that. <gasps> I think they came from inside Gudo's bag. There's definitely three monsters and I think they came from the ball that hit the Antenna. Let me have a look. Hmm, very interesting. This sound. Oh. oh, fuck, dude, what? He just licked that thing. He doesn't know what that is. I guess Dr. Crumb also thought the ball was really good looking. He really liked that sexy green ball. He's like, oh, fuck yeah, let me see that shit. I gotta taste it. But even Gunto didn't think the ball was that good looking. Look at him. His face says it all. He is disgusted. Obviously, it isn't a spaceship. Organic material indicates the formation of a living outer covering inside of which these strange beings develop. In other words, we can say that your baseball here is an egg. Oh shit, it wasn't just a regular green ball. It was an egg. Now I know why Dr. Crumb wanted to taste it. He thought that shit was a whole ass country breakfast. So Dr. Zooks analyzes the egg, finds out it came from outer space because it's got some star fragments in it. And then Gunto also turns on the news and they hear that there's monsters ravaging the city. They're at the zoo and they're eating animals and shit. It sounds actually horrifying. Even like the anchor on the news is terrified. The wrath of destruction is terrible. In an instant, the monster mercilessly tore apart a garden Turn it off, Gunto. and for some reason has run into the zoo. It's sheer madness. Amanda and Gunto get pretty gung-ho about going to fight the monsters because they're like, well shit, we got Dr. Zooks and Dr. Crumb. They fought aliens before in the alien invasion of 1954, so we'll be good. They've got plenty of monster alien hunting equipment. But the whole time that Amanda is talking about going to fight these aliens, Dr. Crumb looks really worried and eventually pulls Dr. Zooks off to the side. Dr. Zooks, I don't believe it's possible. This monster story must be some type of scheme that we need to get to the bottom of. They'll find out the whole lie. 
Monsters don't exist! We invented everything! That story about an invasion of monsters we made up was just so that the government would invest in our interplanetary communication project! Wow, so it turns out they were phonies the whole time. Turns out they made up the whole alien invasion thing just to get money from the government. I don't know how they faked an entire alien invasion just to get money from the government. Like, wouldn't there need to be other witnesses or like buildings destroyed and stuff? Did they kill people and destroy buildings to pretend that they were fighting aliens? That's pretty fucked up. These monsters are a fraud! They're gonna find out everything! We're done! Fried! Oh, fuck him up, Dr. Zooks. Oh, I love that sound that he makes when he slaps him. He sounds like he's really getting his shit rocked. Yeah, his brain's really doing flips now. That's kind of a weird thing that only happens in movies, I'm just realizing. Like, in movies all the time, someone will be having, like, a nervous breakdown, and their friend will be like, snap out of it, and slap him in the face. How many times in your life have you had a friend that was in a serious crisis? Maybe they were having, like, a mental breakdown? breakdown and you thought to yourself, oh, I know what'll calm him down. I'm gonna slap the shit out of him. Oh, you may be having a panic attack, but get ready for a physical attack, bitch. Kick him in the face, kill him. But Amanda gets into everything. Whatever tweaks her interest, she wants to know everything. Dr. Zooks, my niece, my niece will find out. And when she does, she'll no longer respect me. Do you understand? Come on, Dr. Crumb, that girl completely idolizes you! Yo, what about Gunto? What about the boy? What the hell, why is this dude so obsessed with Amanda? This whole movie is so disrespectful to my boy Gunto. My niece! What am I gonna do if my niece finds out? Ugh. Chill out, you weirdo. It's not important what you did, but who you are. A dedicated scientist, an attentive uncle, and a man with character she can be proud of. Look at everything you do. Everything you think you're a famous scientist. Yeah, I wouldn't be that confident that she's still gonna like you like sure You're still a famous scientist like we've all established that the reason for that is a big hoax So you shouldn't even be a famous scientist and judging by how baffled you are at technology It still seems like even after all this time you still suck at science anyway So they have that conversation and then dr. Crumb goes back outside to talk to Amanda and Gunto and finds that they've left They want to go fight the aliens on their own and are just gonna let dr. Crumb and dr. Zooks catch up with them Dear Uncle, we went ahead of you with the photoplasma lithium guns. I'm sure the plan you're putting together will work perfectly. Saving us all and the whole world will be grateful again. Amanda! Amanda! You're in danger! My dear niece, in danger, and it's all my fault! What are we going to do? What about Gunto? Hey, remember the little boy? The little boy that, you, you, that you're that you to care for? You know, you got Amanda, and then your much more younger and defenseless little nephew, Gunto? Yeah, he's there too. He's gone off to fight monsters with fake guns. Do you think that that's maybe a problem too? Or are you just concerned about the niece? So Gunto and Amanda show up to the park. They find this guy selling popcorn, so Gunto starts to buy some popcorn. But then one of the aliens pops out of nowhere, and they all freak out. Dr. Zooks and Dr. Crumb pull up just in the nick of time and they hop in the car and they make a getaway. <laughs> Good for nothing, kids. These days they walk all over you. Even an old popcorn vendor. There's no respect for the corn. When's it all gonna stop? Why do I suddenly feel like this movie was written by a retired popcorn salesman? So they're riding along. They have a little heart to heart because Dr. Crumb eventually tells Amanda that the whole alien invasion was a hoax before, so they're really not as safe as they thought. Then a monster comes out of nowhere, tries to eat them again, and they end up hiding in a movie theater. Do you think those monsters are gone? Would you mind keeping it down? I think I heard something. How did that work? I guess the salt shrank the monster, but like, how did the salt come out of the salt shaker like that? Like, Gunto shook it up and popped it open and the salt just came shooting out. Hey, animators, you know that salt isn't soda, right? You know that that's not how salt works? You can't just shake up a thing of salt and let it spray like that. That's not how it works. Also, Loki kind of disturbed about how pained the monster sounded as it was being salted. <laughs> Like, that is some seriously haunting shit. It really seems like it's experiencing the most pain it's ever felt. <laughs> Be careful! If you get 
give that little guy any more popcorn, he'll disappear. You're absolutely right. I thought once they started talking, the monster would stop making that noise or they would, you know, like reduce the volume of that monster so it wouldn't be so distracting. But nah, the sound design people were just like, fuck it, monster giggling through the whole scene. Good luck trying to pay attention to the dialogue now, bitch. So they've caught one monster, but there's still two more. But Dr. Crumb doesn't want them to go out and try to catch more monsters because he thinks it's not safe, so he grounds them. But Amanda and Gunto decide to sneak out. And now that they know that salt makes the monster shrink, they decide to bring a bunch of little packets of nuts, like tiny little bags of nuts. They bring them along to try to fight the monsters. <laughs> You oversweetened monster! Swallow these salty peanuts! Yo! What? <laughs> That's so many nuts! How did all those nuts come out of that tiny little bag? They just rip open a tiny little, like, airplane-sized bag of cashews. And it's just endless cashews. Now that's what I call... A breakfast with nuts. Hit them with the salt, brother! Hmm. Yeah. Look, I think it's the monster's pet. We come in peace. Okay, so then these other aliens show up, and there are little aliens, and they tell Amanda and Gunto that apparently these big monster aliens that are running around are their pets. They're aliens from another planet, and they had these pets in little eggs, and they were flying by, and they accidentally dropped one down to Earth. So now they're gonna help Amanda and Gunto track down the monsters and feed them salt, which will help shrink them, and then they can take them back to their planet. But... They also say that the opposite of salt is sugar. If the monsters get sugar, that's gonna be bad and they'll get bigger and stronger. So they can't let them get any sugar. No, oh, I want that one right there. Double chocolate delight. Okay, this part is really awkward, and I feel like when I just show little clips from the movie, you don't really get a sense for how awkwardly it's animated, because I'm trying to cut it down for time and make this video interesting. But I'm gonna let this part play out in its entirety so that you can really get a sense for how unnecessarily long some sequences in this movie are. Welcome to Ice Cream Express. How can I help you? <laughs> Oh no, he got the ice cream. He got sweets. That's bad. Also, did they run out of time to model background characters? Because this person in the background is clearly Gunto, but just in the shadows, so you can't see him. That's very clearly the silhouette of Gunto. But they really thought we wouldn't notice, huh? Actually, honestly, maybe it is Gunto. Everyone's disrespecting him so much in this movie, I wouldn't be surprised if he was just like, you know what, I'm gonna fuck off and just go eat ice cream by myself. At this point, I can believe it. I think Gunto needs a break from his really mean family. <laughs> Anyway, eventually they catch all the monsters and just like in What's Up, they've caught all the monsters and the day is saved. You know, now that I think about it, like even the plot is the same. There's three monsters that get loose and they have to go find them. So what, what did they change? What is different about these movies? Thank you for all your help. Yes, we thought for sure we lost them forever. We sent an SOS emergency message to advise you not to feed them anything sweet. So that was your message, not a defect. Then the antenna works. It really works. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, so the message they got at the beginning was right. Wow, what a poorly worded message. How are they supposed to make any sense of that? It seemed like a really critical thing that they understood very clearly what was going on. But instead they were just like, Lost! Sugar! Junk food! Danger! Sugar danger! Really helpful, aliens. Good job. Anyway, that's the end of the movie. In conclusion, did we learn anything new about the universe of What's Up and Big Little Monsters? Actually, yeah, I think I did. Well, no, I guess I didn't. I didn't learn anything that I wanted to know the answer to, but I did learn things that I didn't think needed a different answer. Like in What's Up, I just assumed that Dr. Crumb and Dr. Zooks were good scientists, and that's why they had all of the cool stuff and the great technology. But from this movie, it kind of seems like everything that they have, they either fake 
or got it from aliens as a gift. So that's a thing that I didn't think was gonna change in this movie, but did. Well, that's the movie. I should mention that I have some new merch available on my merch store. There's a nice yellow Greg hoodie, and then there's like a light blue and a coral Greg t-shirt. Some nice summer options for you. All right, well, with all that out of the way, guys, now it's time to talk about our sponsor, Mischief. Mischief is a really cool brand. I've been seeing their drops for a while now, and honestly, they do some really impressive stuff. They release something crazy every two weeks, and they'll range from like viral digital experiences to weird luxury items. The most recent one that you might have heard about is their collaboration with Mr. Beast. It was called Finger on the App. It was basically a competition amongst millions of people. Anyone could download the app and it was a competition to see who could keep their finger on an app for the longest. There were over a million players. It got to number one on the app store and it lasted for over 72 hours. And the grand prize was a whopping $25,000. Another funny one is Scream Club, which is a website where you can go to just scream. So if you've ever wanted to go to a website and just scream or hear other people scream, then this might be for you. You might've heard of this one because there was a pretty viral TikTok about it. Over 1 million people have gone in and screamed and this was actually one of their secret drops. So this would be one where you would have to have the Mischief app in order to be able to get in and scream your little head off. They also have a magazine called Mischief Mag. Each issue has some really interesting stuff in there. For example, they taught you how to use Spotify to make free money, basically. And another covered how to break traffic laws, but legally. Also, I may or may not be allowed to disclose this, but Mischief Mag Volume 2 comes out in August. And it's even crazier than the first one, and the only way to get it is by downloading the app. So go ahead and download the app. Search Mischief on the Google Play Store or the App Store. People with the app get first access to all of the drops, and they also get access to secret drops that you can only get with the app. Or go to Mischief.com. Again, Mischief is spelled M-S-C-H-F. Thanks to Mischief for sponsoring this video, and thank you to you guys for checking out Mischief. Again, it's a really cool company. I highly recommend checking it out. They do a lot of cool stuff. All right, now back to the rest of the video. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new here and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on my notifications to join Greg. Greg's what I call my subscribers, but more importantly, guys, we're a family. We're all blood related. We all came out of the same mommy and we're one big happy family and we're the strongest army on the internet and please don't look that up. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. This video is over now. Go find something else to watch or just watch this video. I know we had a lot of fun, yeah. a lot of fun. But you can't stay on this end screen forever. No. This video is over now, yeah. over now. So why are you still watching this?